Hi everyone, Wesley Smith here with his wife and co-host Tamika Smith, and we're here preparing souls to meet Jesus Christ. We just coming to you today, you know, talking a little bit on distractions. Last mm -hmm. week we talked to y'all about warring against the flesh, but uh, this is kind of a part two. But we want to talk about distractions. How the enemy will send distractions along mm -hmm. to frustrate your purpose. So as we before we go even go into it, we're gonna uh, say a little prayer and then we'll. Begin to speak on the top. Father God, we ask right now, Lord Jesus, that you just come to me and waste a lot of sin and fill us up with you, Father God. We ask right now, Lord Jesus, this video go out, Lord Jesus. Let all hearts and minds be acceptable, Lord Jesus. That the enemy come to frustrate their purpose. He purpose. He come to distract us, Father God. He's doing his assignment, Father God. But we ask, Lord Jesus, that we count it all joy during these hours of temptation, Father God. We thank you. We love you. We ask all these things in Christ Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Um, first, I want to say, if you haven't given your life to Jesus, give your life to him today. Amen. Uh, I want to start this off is uh, the enemy, the devil, he he has an assignment too. Mm -hmm. Just as God given us assignment, mm -hmm. you know, he is still created, a created being by God. And even though he fell from grace, his his <laughs> basically his job, his duty is to to, to try to accuse you, find something that he can uh, point out to say that you're not doing what yes. God called you to do. And if you're just living a sinful life, then hey, he don't have to point fingers at you because you're, you're basically helping his cause. But I do want to say this. His, his job is to kill, steal, and destroy. So so when, when we turn around, a lot of us like to give devil, the devil power. And, you know, uh, one thing that we, we lose sight on is whatever the devil have, it was given to him. And and not God didn't just uh, give him the world that he may be able to, to rule over. It was given because man fell uh, uh, according to disobeying God's word because they were distracted. And, and when they were distracted and the enemy came along and frustrated their purpose, they ended up being kicked out of the most beautiful place on earth, oh my God. which was the Garden of Eden. God placed two trees there, and the tree that they chose to eat from was the tree that he told them that they couldn't touch. He said, don't even touch it. And they still chose to go after it. But um, I'm going to give you a testimony on my half. This week, I had a rough week. Uh, work was, was, was tough. Uh, not only work, it was just uh, dealing with family, dealing with, uh, uh, you know, things in the church, just, just dealing with things, period. And uh, the enemy used what he could to keep yes. me from praying at the times that I normally pray, to keep me from being able to uh, do my, do certain videos on the days that they were supposed to be done, to write my, my, uh, devotionals like I'm supposed to been doing them and uh he was distracting me mm -hmm. and and I had to, and, and I had to stop for a minute and realize that this isn't the the will of the Lord this is I'm allowing myself to be be uh frustrated instead of me rejoicing I begin to kind of get get uh aggravated and frustrated but then I had to realize okay this ain't this ain't this ain't what God called mm -hmm. me to do and sometimes we have to be like Nehemiah, you know, even though you know the guys are are there to try to uh take you off of your post, even though you know uh people, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, friends, coworkers, bosses, whoever gonna come along to probably try to pull you away from that thing that God has you doing, you have to realize you it's certain things you just can't compromise. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not telling you, you know, if <laughs> your boss asks you to come to work on extra day, I'm not telling you not to go to work. If your mother asks you to do something in the midst of you praying, I'm not telling you to, to stop praying. And, and uh, I meant to, to keep, you know, going through doing, you know, whatever you doing to, to not hear your mother. What I am simply saying is, 
if if God has appointed you to be in a certain spot and to do certain things at certain times, then he he appointed that for a reason. Mm -hmm. And and um, the enemy will do whatever he can to try to distract you and take you from uh take you off of your post. And sometimes like Nehemiah here in, in verse chapter uh chapter six, you know, they, they did whatever they, they tried several different things in chapter six to to pull him off of that that wall that they were building. They were trying to build the wall of Jerusalem back up. And uh those of you that know Nehemiah and Ezra and Joshua and Jeroboam and all the different people that came back after the exile of Babylon, you know, they they were they were uh trying to trying to rebuild the the, the temple of God, trying to Amen. rebuild the wall, and and right here in in the the first and chapter six, the first verse, do the I'm gonna just read the first through the fourth fourth verse right now. Now it came to pass when. Sam Balat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of all our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. That Sam Balat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono, but they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messages unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times out of this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. And sometimes we have to be like Nehemiah and just say, you know, I'm doing the work of God. I'm, I'm doing what God has called me to do. And if I don't do it, then there's certain breaches that will be made and I don't want no breach made and, and the uh the things of God that he has called me to do and sometimes you know we have to realize uh when we at work if you called to go into prayer hey if you got to go to the restroom and pray pray Amen. I'm not telling you to go to your boss and be like hey I gotta go pray I gotta go do this I mean I'm just simply saying you know it's gonna be times where we we can't compromise with our faith. Mm -hmm. And uh it's gonna be people that are gonna come at, at you at work and try to, you know, want you to, to act down and especially when your boss see that that you're that they're getting to you, they know that they can get to you, then of course they're gonna keep pushing your buttons if they know they could. But that's where you have to realize the enemy is a spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. They the enemy is using them to 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 get you off of your post. Ain't no people. God, uh, the word tells me that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Those who are called according to their purpose. You know we have a purpose in the, in life, and our purpose is to get saved and go out there and proclaim the gospel. But like it was in the book of Ezra, like my husband was coming from Nehemiah, I'm finna come from the book of Ezra. When they was building on the foundation of the temple, the council got together to come and frustrate their purpose. And in Ezra chapter 4, verse 5, it says, Ezra chapter 4, Marie 4 and 5, Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judea and troubled them in building and hired counsel against them to frustrate their purpose. All the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of purpose. I mean, king of Persia, I'm sorry. So we're going to have the devil of imps and demons coming up to frustrate our purpose. Because we have a purpose to go out there and proclaim this gospel. That's why the enemy has been fighting me and my husband. Because we're proclaiming the gospel across YouTube. We're telling about our testimony of what God has brought us from. And by us building this foundation going through YouTube, of course, he's going to come and frustrate our purpose. But we know we serve a good God. A God that he said he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changed it not. The same God as when the children of Israel got to the land, when, he, when Moses got to the Red Sea. They had the Red Sea in front of them, and they had Pharaoh behind them. But see, that's what Pharaoh is trying to frustrate their purpose. 
Moses talked to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord. The Lord said, hold up your right hand. You have me. And that's what we got to trust in. And when he held up that staff, the sea opened up and they walked through on dry land. How many of us are willing to walk through our situations on dry land? Not worry about that water. Because he said he'll be a bridge over troubling water. So we can't worry about our situation. All we can do is keep our eyes on the Lord. And that's one thing to come from with. Um, I'm going to read one more scripture to you guys. And this is in. I'm sorry. It's in Proverbs. And the word tells me, put away Proverbs chapter 4, verse 24 through 27. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lip. Put far from thee. Let thy eye look right on and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all the ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy feet from evil. That's what we got to ask the Lord, to remove our feet from evil. Because sometimes we know we're going to do something wrong, and we know it's wrong. But what we want to do, we want to turn to the left or turn to that right instead of going straight through our situation. Even though the enemy come to frustrate us, thank you, Jesus. That's what we need to tell the Lord. He said, give thanks in all things, for this is the will of Christ Jesus in us. God in Christ Jesus. He said, give thanks. Then in the book of James, he turned around and tell us to count it all joy during these diverse temptations. So no matter where these men are temptations, that's what diverse is, men. So when these men are temptations come up, don't worry about the frustration. Don't worry about it. Satan is on the assignment. And that is to kill, steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said he comes to give us life and life more abundantly. So let's just enjoy our life. I think it's in the book of Zechariah when Joshua, he told Joshua that his garment was unclean, but he has cleaned them. But he said that Satan will always be at your right hand. Keep your garment clean. He going to always be there to buffet it up. That's what he told, that's what Jesus told Paul too. He gonna always be there to buffet it up. So all we can do is just trust in the Lord. Don't worry about the distractions that going on. Yes, mm -hmm. I have distractions. Yeah. The enemy has been coming right and left with my. I, I'm sick in my. I got my leg has been messing with me. They say it's my L3 and L4 in my back. But I, they've been sending me so many different doctors. And my husband's the only person that works. They've been trying to send me this doctor, that doctor. Yes, God has been showing us favor. Yes. Yes. I'm not going to give all the credit to, you know, just me and my husband. God has been showing us favor. But in the midst of those favors, guess what? The enemy has been trying to distract us with finances. We got to pay this. We got to pay that. But we're going to count it all joy. We're going to continue to seek the Lord. And I know a lot of us understand what that means to try to pay this bill try to pay that bill that's another thing that comes in our way and get distracted how oh, i'm gonna do this how i'm gonna do that i can't do this i can't do that we can do all things through christ to strengthen us what's impossible to us is possible to god amen and and uh you know another thing i love about nehemiah is there was several types of opposition that came up against them. And regardless of how much opposition came up against them, uh, even at one point when they first started building the wall and, and you know, the, the enemy was claiming that they were going to attack them, man, these guys were standing up there with with the, uh, the pick axes that they were, you know, picking the wall with. But then a spear, they had a weapon in one hand, and then they had the weapon, uh, not a weapon, but a tool that they were using to, to help get the wall back in shape in the other hand. And right here, you know, I'm not going to start, you know, from the beginning of the chapter, but I'm going to start somewhere around Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 15, and um, I'm probably going to go to, man... 
20. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and God had brought their counsel to naught, that we returned all of us to the wall, everyone unto us to his work. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servant wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears, the shields, and the bows, and the harbingers, and the rulers were behind all of the house of Judah. They which build it on the wall, and they that bear burden with those that laid it, wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. See, they, they were working, but at the same time, they had the weapon in their hand. In case they had to fight, but at the same time, they were trusting God to fight for them also. Mm -hmm. Because it say right here in verse 18, For the builders, everyone had his sword girded by his side, and so build it. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. And I said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, The work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall, one far from another. And what place, therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither unto us, our God shall fight for us. So so regardless of how the enemy is trying to come, regardless of the distraction that he's trying to bring, you have to you have to remember that uh God is gonna fight your battle mm -hmm. for you. And you know if, if God is in the midst of what you're doing, oh you you know it's of him. I, mm -hmm. I think about an act when they try to distract uh Peter and John and and all the apostles' purpose. And uh gave me lead, gave me yeah, one of the uh the uh chief priests, he told them, he said, Look, he said, I, I remember this guy that that uh some years ago tried to try to lead a rebellion and, and if it, it and it wasn't a God and it dispersed. He said, So lead them be if it be a God, it'll 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 flourish. But if it's not a God, then it then it won't. But see you had certain uh chief priests and you know, people like Saul, when at the time before he be, before he became Paul, he was Saul the persecutor. And and by the way, Saul means to bring sorrow. So so at the same time, he he was persecuting the, the people of God until mm -hmm. finally one day God had to distract the purpose of what Saul was doing, which was to, mm -hmm. to, to attack his people. But at the same time, my point of what I'm trying to say is you're gonna have people like like Saul the persecutor coming in your life, trying to get you off of your post, trying to, you know, worry you, have you thinking, you know, all the different types of elements are coming up against you. And at the same time, it, it's the tricks of the enemy trying to, yeah. trying to get you off of your post. But you have to remember the weapon, the, the same tool that, that you have in one hand to build, God has given you a weapon that, that no, no, Weapon formed against you shall prosper yes. if you trust in God. Yes, so, so yes. you have to realize just as as you're given a tool to 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 build and to create and to yes. do certain things in the name of Jesus, He also has given you a weapon, yes. and your weapon is prayer. Your weapon is confession. Your weapon is is, is trusting in God. Your weapon is uh, uh the gifts of the Spirit. Your your weapon is is fueling those gifts with the fruits of the spirit, and and you know I know we don't discuss the how we just go to the gifts of the spirit in uh, Corinthians, and just read to them what the gifts of the spirit is, and because last week we read the fruits of the spirit, and and see these these two they work hand in hand with each other. And and you got to have love in order for cause, cause Paul basically break it down. You you can you can prophesy, you could you know, you could heal, you could do this, you could do that. But but if you if, if you don't have love then then it, it, it profits you nothing. He said he said I could I could talk with the, the, the tongue of men and the tongue of yes, angels. Yes, yes. But if but if I have charity, which is love or God pay love, if I don't have that, then then you know, it, 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 it's like noise, Tink, a tinkering mm -hmm. symbol just making noise. And, and see, the enemy wants us to be a tinkering symbol, just making mm -hmm. noise. Yeah. He wants us to just, just in Corinthians. Yeah, okay. He wants us just yeah, to, know. just to Profit. focus and uh, focus on ourselves and not 
you know, do the things that God wants us to do. Right. And, and like I said, once again, I am going to sit here and say that I'm not telling you, you know, when you at work, just to stop doing what you're doing and 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 just, you know, uh, overriding what, because at the same time who God has placed an authority over you, he has placed an authority over you. It's the same way if you're at your church, same way if you're at home and you live with your mama. Same thing if you at home and you live with your spouse or whatever the case is, you still have to know how to respect boundaries. Don't don't overstep boundaries and don't you know don't try to uh because the enemy will distract you in that way too, especially when you're praying he'll use a wife or he'll use a child or whatever the case is. Now, you know it's the distraction of the enemy and you already discerned this dis distraction of the enemy. Keep praying. Uh, the other day, my baby came in the room. And my wife was calling me because she wanted to, uh, no son, so she sent my, my two-year-old to come get me. And he came in here. He seen I was praying, but at the same time, he was doing what his mama told him to do. So he kept calling my name, but I knew that I, I had to... Uh, keep praying because I knew that was and not saying that but you never know yeah you never know how the enemy is he's mm -hmm. more wise and cunning and subtle than any beast of the field so you know they he knew I was praying and he used my wife to send my son mm -hmm. and in the midst of that you know when she realized that I wasn't answering to him she knew I was praying and she came and got him but uh, we have to we that that's what I mean. We have to use wisdom and discernment, discernment mm -hmm. of the spirit, which is one of the gifts of the spirit. That's one of your weapons. Mm -hmm. You have to realize, you know, <laughs> that tool uh, becomes a weapon uh, as well. So so uh, read the gifts of the spirit. But to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. To another faith by the same spirit. To another gift of healing by the same spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discernment of the spirit. To another dire kinds of tongue. To another interpretation of tongue. But all these work at that one in the self same spirit. Divine to every man servantly as he will. Mm -hmm. And see though. I mean if you look at them. You, you got nine the of them. Spirit. Yeah, you got nine of them, and they kind of all break down in different categories to the the uh, spirit of revel. I mean, the gift of revelation, which is the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and the uh, the discerning of the spirit. Then you got the the uh, the the uh, gift of gifts of power, which fall under uh, the working of miracles, healings, mm -hmm. and faith. And then you got the the last three, which is a uh, the gifts of how did how did I look at that? Well, basically, uh, interpreting tongues, speaking tongues, and the gift of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Uh, all those that's the gifts of impartation. I, I guess that's how you would look at them. But but you know, everyone has God has given each and every person that has dedicated their life. And see that when we work, this is the stuff that will will be. In. Yeah. That's being downloaded into us, the gifts, and each and every one of us were born with a gift. But the Bible shows us when the men were given the coin, you can you can acquire other gifts. Now each and uh, one person isn't going to operate each and every gift because only Jesus did that, and that will make you equal to God. And then you would stop giving God the glory and start yes, yeah. giving yourself, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, and that's another way that the enemy would try to distract you when you know that uh, a lot of people are, are uh, uh, honoring you. You know, if we, if we, uh, if we don't give God the glory, pride will swell up in us. And, and that's one, one distraction that you don't know is coming sometimes. Especially when you get pride and you begin to boost your ego, you allow yourself to go into a, a area of uh, uh, self-centeredness mm -hmm. and self-righteousness to the pride. point where, where you 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 know you just think everything that you do is right, and you can't be told. And 
And see, this is the saying, um, uh, don't get knocked off of your high horse. See, Paul or Saul at the time, when he got hit by the light and riding the Damascus Road, he got knocked off his high horse. And you know, I was talking to a to a, a preacher yesterday, and he broke it. He broke it down. That's where that saying come from. Uh, don't uh, fall, get knocked off your high horse because sometimes we can get to the point where we just think we're right about what yeah. we're doing, and, and and God gotta gotta stop us. And that's what he had to do with Saul. And uh, even though God distracted his purpose for the right reason, to because these great things for God he had to suffer, uh, we had to realize that uh, there are going to be times where it's just going to seem like all the odds are always against us. Mm-hmm. But that's when you know it's a storm. It's a storm right there at that moment in time. Yes, but uh, after, you, after you go through the storm, while the wind is blowing and you get, you got to be like that tree planted by a river. And, and while the wind blowing, you, you be a shifted. Can't be uprooted. Hallelujah. But you can't be uprooted. You just have to realize that after you get through, after you go over, after you 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 finish, you know, after the enemy has done all he can and and yeah. and you you still think of Jesus in the midst of, you know, it's a it's a greater blessing on the other side. So uh, it is it, very, very important that we pay attention to little distractions. That come along to pull us off our assignment because you know, uh, the enemy trying to get to me because he know you know that I'm um, my my pastor arm bear. She she is my co pastor arm bear. So if he can get us off of praying for them in the midst of you know what I mean, God giving elevation, then you know the the enemy can begin to try to get his grips toward them. And and attack them more and more. So uh, we all have to be all. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. So we have to realize, you know, uh, the enemy does certain things for a reason. He been doing this for a very long time, and he's a perfect strategist at what he does. But guess what? God is an eternal strategist at what he does, and that makes him omnipotent, omniscient. And omnipresent, so that means that uh, any move that the devil makes, God doesn't know. So uh, we just have to trust in God and realize, you know, the distraction gonna come. But can we continue to to uh, endure through the tr- distraction? Mm-hmm. Can we continue if, if uh, the enemy trying to whisper in your ear while you praying? Can can you let let's use this? Sometimes we be praying that uh, all of a sudden a bad itch will come. Yes, it will. All of a sudden a bad itch will come. Do you do you uh, start itching in the midst of the prayer? No, don't let it distract you. Fight through that itch. It happens to me all the time. Yeah. Sometimes it might feel like somebody tap you. Or sometimes it might feel like a scratch or, or something. Uh, the enemy will do anything. Especially when you in when you, when he knows that the anointing is on you around you, he'll do whatever he can. And once he know that he can do that and get you out of the will of God, he said, "Up, oh, I found you." Yeah. And if he found you, guess what? He continue to drill at that weakness until you learn patience. Got anything else? All I'm gonna say: If God be for you, who can be against you? Yes. God is for us, people. He love you. He love us more than we can ever imagine. Yeah. And I know I wouldn't have been able to go to the cross. So what that telling you? Let's just keep it real. Would any of us been willing to do that sacrifice that Jesus did? Would any of us been take? Oh my God! Thank you, Jesus. He yeah. paid a ransom. He didn't know. That's thankful enough to keep on looking toward those here for which all our help coming, for which all our help coming from the Lord. Amen. That's that's keep telling us to keep looking toward that mark. Keep pressing, keep going toward Jesus, for He is the truth, the way, and the life. No man get to the Father but by Jesus. Let's just keep going. Let's press our way through. 
Just, just keep moving, people. Moving on that narrow path. Let's just keep moving. That's all I got to say. If God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. And once again, I'm going to say, if you haven't given your life to Jesus, give it to him today. Don't Amen. put off today. Don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today. Because Jesus loves you and he died for you. And remember, tomorrow ain't promised to you. Amen. So, uh, we're going to ask that you subscribe, share, comment. Amen. Uh, email if you want a prayer, if you want to uh, be saved, or Amen. if you have any dreams, visions, or any other, uh, anything that you would like to discuss. Mm -hmm. So, once again, we're going to tell you that we love you, but Jesus Amen, love you love more. You. And don't forget to say, God bless you guys. And don't forget to say, thank you, thank Jesus, you, Jesus. Love you.